All right, so I've already done a video on Photoshop's generative fill, which if you haven't already seen, you can check it out here. However, in this particular video, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into how this tech can actually work for me and save me and you some time in your post-processing, especially if you are editing portraits. So I'm gonna run you through a few realistic scenarios that I've run into and how we can overcome them quickly with Photoshop generative fill. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump on the computer and get started. All right, so chances are you've taken a portrait and there's been some objects in the background that you don't particularly like uh, happen to the best of us and if it hasn't happened to you then uh, you're a better photographer than I am but let's go ahead and basically make a selection here and click on generative fill and I'm just gonna click generative fill again and I'm just gonna have Photoshop literally do its thing now this is actually a bit more of a complex edit if you will because I also selected the hair because the object was a little bit behind the hair but here's the crazy thing as you can see just like that without any issues it was able to basically recreate create the hair and remove those objects. So yeah, it gives you a couple of different options to choose from. This looks really, really natural as well. Let's go in and keep that one, okay? Now, let's say you wanted to add uh, something to the scene just to make it a little bit more interesting. This is something that sometimes I do just to, once again, make it a little more interesting. So let's go ahead and uh, select this corner here. And then in the prompt, let's just put palm tree. Hit enter and let's see what that gives us. See, something like that is really, really cool because it blurred it out. It blurred that object that it generated. So it gives it a little bit more depth to the image overall, which I think is really, really cool. But one thing I also want to do is this crop is really, really tight and I would rather just maybe expand it just a little bit. So I can go to my crop tool. I'm going to grab the corner on this side and just bring that out a little bit, just like that hit enter and then what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to select a section of the image just like so select inverse and this way we are giving a little bit of a context essentially to the Photoshop AI I'm going to click generate and generate again and essentially just let it do its thing boom just like that like flawlessly it expanded it and if you look at the hat, it pretty much matched the other side. Let me switch through a couple of different options here and see what it did. See, this one also I think looks really, really good. That's really cool. Let's keep it like that. Now, let me show you the next example. Let's say you're in the studio, this happens a lot, and your backdrop is not covering the entire frame, right? So here you can see on the left side of the frame, you have the light stand and a bit of the actual background behind the paper background, right? Now, typically when you would remove this prior to generative fill, you would essentially basically clone this out, right? Using the background or using the, the areas right here. But now it's a little bit easier. Let me show you, I'm gonna use my lasso tool and I'm gonna just select this area and I'm gonna hit generative fill and generate again and just let Photoshop do it for us. Boom, and literally in a couple of clicks, we get this result. Now, if you zoom in, you can see it's obviously not perfect, but it is pretty dang close. Now, the cool thing about generative fill too is it does create a new layer for us here. So essentially, with you know, I wanted to just basically refine this, um, this line here. I can click on our brush, make this pretty big, bring our hardness down and just feather out the mask a little bit, just like that. And it's much, much faster than if you were to do it manually using either the clone or content aware. Like sometimes even the content aware just really misses the mark and makes it like not at all a usable product. All right, now in my opinion, this is a really good example because it's something that happens to me so many times. When I go out and shoot, I would typically want uh, some sort of clouds or something like that in the sky to just make the image a little bit more interesting. Some people don't, some people do. It all depends just on the image you're going for. But in this example, I would have liked for there to be some clouds to make the image just a little bit more interesting and draw you a little bit more into the subject. However, I can actually add that in post pretty easily with generative fill. So I'm gonna make a quick selection here. Highlight that. Once selected, I'm gonna to come to my generative fill button and our prompt is going to be mountains with clouds. Hit enter and now let's see what we get. Okay, now it seems like it didn't really do too much. 
and just added some trees, but that actually still draws your eye in a little bit more to the subject. Let's see what other options we got. Didn't really do much there either, but here it actually added the mountain range, which I think is pretty cool. Some clouds at the top don't look too good though. Let me regenerate this and hopefully we should get a better result from this. Okay, now that's pretty sweet. As you can see, it really does draw your eye in quite a bit. Unfortunately, the clouds, eh, still not very realistic, but I do like what it was doing with the mountain there. Even this, even though it doesn't particularly have a mountain, you can see that it does add to the drama of the image. I really like this, uh, this version. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and stick with this one. Here's the after, here's the before. I think it just adds a little bit more depth. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. And that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned a few ways that you can get creative and use this tech to quicken up your editing workflow. If you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help my channel continue to grow. And with that said, once again, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.